begin. Now here, let's talk about the human trypanosomiasis, which is the disease. So we have already discussed about the basic part of the disease section, which are uh, how the structures are and also what are the different components of it. Now we'll be talking about, now we'll be talking about its uh, different disease that are caused by this particular trypanosoma. Now the disease caused by trypanosoma can be divided into two different sections. One is the disease called, uh, the disease actually called sleeping sickness but it is a kind of African sleeping sickness and the second type of disease is called American sleeping sickness. So let's try to talk about it. Uh, it is African trypanosomiasis or African sleeping sickness and in this case it is actually started in West Africa by the trypanosoma gambiens or trypanosoma brucei gambiens and we already talked about that. Now it, it sometimes can also transfer in East Africa too because it, it can be found in a whole uh, lot of African regions. In East Africa it is caused by trypanosoma brucei, brucei rhodiacins. Okay. And for the American trypanosomiasis, it can be caused by trypanosoma cruzi, right? Now, usually American people uh, can get this disease if they visited Africa in some region. Otherwise, they won't. There is no way to get this disease because actually, this trypanosoma or this setsi fly, which are the carrier uh, for this or the vector for this disease, uh, is not present. Is not found in America. It is mostly found in Africa. Right? So if an American people move to Africa and if it is uh, being infected and bitten by those set supply, infected set, set supply, then, uh, then there is a chance of getting the disease. Now if we look at uh, the trypanosomiasis in Africa, what we can see, the vector is set supply. Look at the spelling, look at the pronunciation again, set supply. And trypanosoma brucei gambiens is the uh, agent for uh, this, this disease in West Africa and trypanosoma brucei Rhodesians is uh, the example of uh, for the uh, East African disease. Now, in this case, you can see uh, the disease caused by Brucei gambiens causes chronic infection lasting years and affect con different countries of Western as well as Central Africa. Okay. Now, in case of uh, Brucei rhodesians, it causes acute illness, which is much more worse than the disease caused by gambians, and it is lasting several weeks in southern and eastern Africa. So, though this Brucei rhodesians or Trypanosoma rhodesians, uh, rhodesians cause a very uh, small duration of the disease, almost one or two, two or three weeks uh, for the disease, but this disease symptoms are much worse. But gambians can cause the disease uh, often, more often uh, throughout the Africa. It is very long lasting, like years, but it is not that much harmful. Okay. Now, how this disease is transmitted? Now, remember, I've talked about this vector. We've talked about the vector, and the vector is called as setsi fly. And this is the structure of the setsi fly here. Right? It is found in rural Africa. There are over 22 types of this, this fly and all strictly feed on blood. So they feed on blood. This is very important. Feed on blood. Otherwise, this disease may not be happen. Right? Now, uh, they usually breed on rivers and streams. And after that, they can come and infect other individuals. They can eat and feed on blood and then can spread this trypanosoma from their salivary gland to the bloodstream of human being right and then the disease can be spread now a pregnant woman could pass this disease uh, to the in, to the child and the child become infected due to this kind of situation so it, this can be congenital in such a way right so if we look at the african map we can see this whole red region all this red red region like uganda kenya tanzania malawi ethiopia and this all whole, whole section of this middle africa is uh, almost in throughout the middle africa we can see setsi fly and also North and East Africa also. Right? So this is a kind of tough situation throughout the Africa because setsi fly lives there. And here comes the different stages of uh, this disease. Right? So here in this case, let us first know these this symptoms, the signs that I means infective stage, D means diagnostic stage. Okay, so let's talk about it. So the first stage is that, let's say the setsi fly um, takes a blood meal of a man. Now the setsi fly here, we are talking about the setsi fly here is infected. It is infected with, uh, or say it is infected with trypanosoma. So it is carrying trypanosoma. It is carrying trypanosoma. Now, as it is carrying trypanosoma, if it infects, if it feed, if it's 
if it is feeding onto the blood of human being, it will inject this trypanosoma inside the bloodstream of this individual, right? So it injects it. After the injection, the injected uh, metacyclic trypano, it, it, is, it is called actually trypanomastigotes. Once it is in, ingested, once it is not being developed and fully adult yet, it is called as trypanos, trypan, trypanos, trypan, Tripomastigotes, sorry for that. Tripomastigotes. Now, this is called the metacyclic tripomastigotes. And this metacyclic tripomastigotes transformed into the bloodstream into tripomastigotes. Simple tripomastigotes inside the bloodstream. Now, this tripomastigotes multiply by binary fission, as you can see in this picture. The binary fission means remember, if this is a cell, it will make a pinch like that and then it will divide into two cells. So, it's a kind of simple division like bacterial uh, cell division so it multiply by binary fission in various bloody fluids uh, like blood lymph and spinal fluid also now usually they multiply in this blood and lymph nodes and they store in in the lymph node and they are moving through blood and lymph vessels okay after that it will move uh, to blood and then it is called the tripomastigotes in the blood so you simply know as that now still this part Till that part, we are only talking about the diagnostic phase. Now, if we take blood from this individual and look for it, we can find this tripomastigotes in the blood of the infected individual, right? After this stage, this tripomastigotes uh, will go and freely moving around the bloodstream of human beings. So, it, it, this stage can last for years. This can last for several months to years. So they can just go on moving on and they can, they will provide some milder symptoms so we can see if you look at the graph of the symptoms we'll be looking at it uh, in the later slides that we can find a kind of rise in the infectivity a kind of symptoms and a fall then again a rise and fall again a rise and fall so we, can, we are going to see a lot of infections like that now the infections usually uh, getting the graph like that is called kind of persistent infections because it is not going away it is slightly it is sometimes getting very high then again antibodies are raised by the body antibodies are killing some of the infect uh, pathogens and again the infection is going down but after a certain time it will vary their antigen in such a way due to this antigenic variation they again start to fight against the body immunity and they again start to rise but they again new antibodies will fight against them and taking them uh, and uh, killing them down again right so this is a kind of system Right now, here we, what we can see that this uh, this the trypanosome or trypomastigotes they are moving around the bloodstream, and in those cases, suppose another set of fly moves away and move, moves in, and it will start taking another blood meal from this individual. Now, now in this case, individual is infected, but the set of fly is uninfected. But after uh, this this uh, bloody meal, what they can get? They can get this trypanosome at their salivary gland. Now at the salivary gland, so, so from throughout the salivary gland what we can see, the bloodstream trypomastigotes transformed into procyclic trypomastigotes in sets of flies mid-gut. So it will move on through the salivary gland, uh, th through, through the uptake region, through the mid-gut of this uh, sets of fly and it will be called as procyclic trypomastigotes. Now here they will start to divide again using binary vision after certain divisions what it will move this procyclic trypomastigotes leave the midgut and transformed into epimastigotes now once this epimastigotes are made they again start to grow and divide again after the division this epimastigotes multiply in salivary gland and when they come to the salivary gland they are transformed into metacyclic trypomastigotes now this metacyclic trypomastigotes again move and they are stored in the salivary gland of the set of fly so that now second time if the set of fly infect a healthy individual this cycle repeats again and again and again now you can see the multiplication can be found in the simple trypomastigotes in the bloodstream of human being it can be found in the midgut of a set of fly and also you can find this division going on in the salivary gland of uh, fly, set of fly. So, these are the different stages. You can see most of the stage, most of this uh, dangerous kind of stages that they are growing in both this case, the growing and division are going on uh, most of the time in the set of fly body. So, if the set of fly is carrying this uh, trypanosoma, there is no way uh, that the individual won't get it. They will surely get it and after a certain time, they will develop into sleeping sickness disease. Okay.
if we look at the insect stage uh, in the blood stream what we can get that the different stages express different sets of surface proteins remember we have already talked about the surface proteins varying the surface proteins they can vary the response of immunity and that provides them some time for their growth and development right now the insect forms have larvae mitochondria with many cysts it's, it's not that much because because they require energy they require for their movement and all these things so that's why they require more uh, amount or more region or more space inside their mitochondria that's why they are having more cysts okay uh, more cysts not cysts cysts and insect stages have an aerobic metabolism and a full respiratory chain so that's why they are not uh, anaerobic they are aerobic that's why they are living in the blood stream and midgut so that's the region the uh, reason that they are not staying in the uh, set supply midgut for longer period of time because they won't they won't uh, get uh, enough amount of oxygen there so that's why they start to come out to the body circulation systems like blood or lymph uh, lymphatic system or uh, sometimes in salivary glands for uh, the set supply right now blood stream forms only engage in the glycolysis and excrete pyruvate and glycerol outside right note that transmission stages do not replicate and are arrested in development right so that's that's a very important point so until and unless they are met with some uh, female trypanosome they won't go and replicate that's the very important part okay so that's the kind of transmission stage transmission stage means uh, these are the stage when when uh, they are moving from the set supply to human or from human to set supply right now if we look at the stages in human body because we are in, in, in interested in how it is going on inside human so it, if this is the injection uh, of of this uh, trypanosome by the set supply uh, and first it made to this blood vessel and through this blood vessel or lymphatic they will move into the secondary stage uh, where they can move from blood vessel to other tissues also i haven't mentioned it but still they can migrate to other tissues because they can move using their flagella now, but after that they can sometimes the third stage and the most dangerous stage can occur sometimes it occurs sometimes it does not but if it occurs it can migrate through it can cross the blood brain barrier and it can move to the blood uh, to the brain region and it, it will start damaging the central nervous system that's the dangerous because uh, cns they start damaging cns sometimes that's dangerous right so usually the why they are kind of dangerous because they can avoid our immune system so if we talk about their virulence and pathogenesis uh, so they can create pathogenic factors because they are dangerous they are having all these things but the most dangerous thing about trypanosomal infection is that they can avoid the immune system by antigenic variation right so they can change uh, the anti their their outer membrane coat in certain case the protein produced in certain case so that uh, they can fool our immune system 